What up y'all, Preston Smiles here. Make sure you go to PrestonSmiles.com because I got some magical, juicy stuff that I only release through email. So today's transmission. Five ways to overcome fear and master personal freedom. So in 2005, I started surfing. And I was good, but not that great. And I decided to go on this trip with my buddy Josh to a surf break called Tarantulas. Now out the gate, I should have known that this was gonna be an issue with a surf break called Tarantulas. So we get there and it's beautiful and the waves are crashing. And at this point, remember that I had only surfed just a little bit and maybe the biggest wave I had ever surfed was five feet. So from the beach break, it looked like everything I had ever surfed. So we get out there, we strap on our wetsuits, we paddle out. And as I get closer, I'm like, Josh, these, these waves are bigger than like they looked back there. And he's like, oh yeah, it's probably six to 10 feet today, which is actually really big. And it was heavy, right? So we get out there and I'm shaking, I'm scared. It was like, like it was Iceland, even though the sun was out and we're in California. I was, you know, really nervous. And after about 20, 30 minutes, I gathered the courage to paddle for a wave. And I caught this wave and I was happy and I was excited. And I was like, woohoo! And I kicked out of the wave and I looked up and I heard one of the guys say, outside, which in surfer terms means that there's a gigantic wave, rogue wave coming in and you better paddle your butt off or you're going to get annihilated. So I'm here, they're here, and the wave is here. So everybody's paddling full speed, right? And then there's a point when I realize and everybody else realizes after they make it over that I'm not gonna make it. And what's even worse is that I'm in the impact zone, which means I'm in the po point where the wave kicks up and slams in the exact spot. So that first wave is coming and I'm seeing it check up and I was like, okay, there's no way out of this. So I try to dive under and the wave hits me, bang, slams me to the ground. I'm in this seagrass being tumbled and pushed to the ground and thrown everywhere. And I come up and I take this breath <gasps> only to see that there's another one. And that one comes, bang, hits me, takes me, throws me, pushes me further out, and then another one comes. And at this point, when the third one comes, I have the thought, I may not make it. I have that thought that this is actually life and death and that I actually may not make it this time. So it hits me, I go down, I wash your machine, I tumble, eventually I come up, <gasps> take the breath, and I see that it's clear and it's calm. And at this point, my buddy Josh is screaming, Preston, Preston, come here, come here, P, come out. And I see that the sand is there and I could paddle back to the beach or I could go back out with the surfers. And I have this choice point, this moment. What do I do? Do I go back where it's safe or do I go and do the thing that I love? And Josh told me later that it looked like I had death in my eyes and it was so important that I get back out there and get back on that board and surf again. Because if I would have went which I did not choose. If I would have went back to the beach, I would have never surfed again and I would have missed out on this beautiful gift that I do all the time. So I paddled back out and yes, I was afraid and fear was coming through my body, but I did it anyway. It took me almost an hour to catch the next wave, but I did it anyway. Now, before we even begin and I give you the five master steps to overcoming fear and gaining your personal freedom and your personal power, I must say this, that it is highly important that you Share what's coming up for you. That you tell your friends and your family or somebody you trust, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a husband, a wife, whoever, that you tell somebody what you're experiencing. You see, if I would have tried to go at that alone without having Josh, maybe I would never be a surfer. Maybe I wouldn't even be living. But because I had a friend who got my fears, because I had a friend who could see what I was going through from a different perspective, because I had a friend who could see it differently, he held the space for me to get over my fears. Step number one to overcoming your fear is examine your story carefully. Ask yourself, is this real? Ask yourself, is this grounded or am I making this story bigger than what it is? Ask yourself, is there a possibility that there can be another outcome? Does this have to be true for me or is it true for just me and nobody else? Because when you examine the story, you can create enough space where it doesn't have you. You know, a lot of people are afraid of, let's say, snakes, right? So they have a story that the snake is gonna come out and bite them. But if we examine it carefully, 
the likelihood of a snake jumping out and biting you for no reason is pretty rare. Step number two to overcoming your fears is drop your need for security. You know, people will, just for security, will stay in jobs they hate and marriages that are making them miserable and they'll keep doing things like overeating even though they know it's killing them. So when you drop your need to feel secure all the time, you overcome the fear. When you drop your need of having to know and have it all figured out, you create a space where you can be bigger than something. I know so many people who want to follow their dreams, but the fear of failure is stopping them. The fear is getting in their way. They're addicted to their comfort zone and the security of knowing where the next paycheck is coming from. No, I get it. That's not an easy thing to do necessarily, but if you start doing number one, which is examining the story, and then step into number two, which is go, you know what, do I really, really need all this security? And is this security real? I've met so many people and seen it in my own family where somebody thinks that they're secure in their job, in their relationship, and then the rug gets pulled from under them. So if it can get pulled no matter what, why in the hell would you stay in it just because it's secure? You gotta push against your edges. You gotta move forward. And step number three, which is treat fear like an action call. Every time you experience fear, know that that's exactly what you get to walk towards. Know that that's the thing that you get to move forward in. If you're afraid to talk to that girl, ask her for her number, if you're afraid to ask for a raise in your job, that's exactly what you need to do. If you're afraid to go to your mate, to your partner, to your best friend and say, you know what, brother, the way that you've been acting is not necessarily conducive to our friendship. If you're afraid of that, that's what you walk towards. Walk towards what you're afraid of and you overcome it. Step number four to overcoming your fear is reframe your fear into excitement. Robert Heller said that fear is excitement without the breath. You know, people ask me all the time, are you afraid to speak? I went and spoke in Australia for 6,500 people. And after it was over, a few people said, were you afraid? And yes, I felt fear. I felt some fear come up, but I transmuted that. I pushed it into excitement. I got myself pumped up. I got myself in a state ready to go like I'm doing now. I asked myself powerful questions like who am I and what am I here for? Well, the answer to who am I is love. And what am I here for? The answer to that is serve, service. I'm here for service. So in that moment, it became less about me and my fears and looking bad and looking stupid and messing up and not getting the words right and more about being of service for humanity, for the 6,500 people that were in that room. It was more about service in that moment. So when you reframe it into excitement and ask powerful questions like, what am I here for? I can almost guarantee you, nine out of 10, you're gonna have the same answer as I did, which is service. What am I here for? I'm here to serve. Okay, so stop making it about me and make it about them. And in that moment, the fear gets transmuted. It becomes excitement and you can use it to create. Now step number five, which is the final last step, is make sure you breathe. Just breathe. You know, I found that whenever I'm feeling fear, nine out of 10, I'm also not breathing. You know, when something comes up, my breath shortens. When I'm in an argument, when I feel that anger and things coming up, I stop breathing. So if you just take some moments, whenever you're feeling fear about anything, whether it's jumping off of a bridge, bungee jumping, or asking your soon-to-be wife to marry you, or whatever the case may be, just take a moment to get still, get silent, and be with your breath. Because there's so much wisdom in the body, there's so much space that gets created when we stop tightening and get in the flow of life, you know? Life is about the in-breath and the out-breath, the yin and the yang. There's a flow. And when you tap back into that flow, then you can create from there. Guys, fear is not real. It's only real because we say it is. It's a tool that can be used on our tool belt, but it's not something that gets to run our lives. If you are afraid of something in your life, that is the thing that points to your freedom. Whatever you are most afraid of is the thing that holds your personal freedom. 
What's up, my beautiful people? If you are new to the tribe and you're on YouTube, go ahead and click subscribe, like, and leave a comment. If you're on Facebook, tag somebody, click like, leave a comment. I love you guys so much. It is going down in a beautiful major way. I am, we are, hashtag love's voice. Live love, give love, be love. Oh, oh. You were created in the image and likeness of God. That can never fail. You are pure magic, pure beauty, and you're so powerful that you're creating even when you don't know you are.